You know, it's interesting because uh, sex addiction is one of those medical and psychiatric issues that has become more driven by public interest than by professionals announcing there is a problem and we're treating it. In other words, people tend to come forward and say, I'm a sex addict or my spouse is a sex addict. And yet the therapeutic community really hasn't caught up with this fully. In other words, when you have a natural healthy function like sexuality or eating, it's much harder to diagnose as being a problem than if you have something that's added to your life like gambling or drinking or something that isn't a natural part of day-to-day -day living. So when you have drugs, alcohol, gambling, those are things that, that you can live without, that some people never engage in, some people never drink, some people never use drugs, some people never gamble, and they live very happy, fulfilled lives. But everyone needs to eat, and everyone should be having healthy sexuality as a part of their life at some point. So um, part of the challenge in identifying sex as an addiction is that is a part of is healthy sexuality is a part of being a healthy human being, and so people don't want to put a a label on people who have a lot of sex because that for them it might be very healthy. So part of the reason that it's difficult to identify sex addiction as an addiction is because healthy sexuality is a part of having a healthy life. Um, whereas it's much easier to identify alcohol alcoholism as an addiction because getting drunk every night is not part of a healthy life. Um, another part, another reason it's difficult for people to identify sex addiction as an addiction is because um, that we have so many moral and ethical beliefs around what is and isn't acceptable healthy sexual behavior. And I think as a uh, therapeutic community, as therapists, we've, ver we've worked very hard to not start uh, pathologizing people because they choose same-sex relationships, to not pathologize or label people because they like to play with toys during their sexual behavior. You know, these are things that it's really not our job to say are good, bad and wrong. In other words, the therapy community spent a lot of time giving people permission to have healthy sexuality that they used to hate and shame themselves for. So what the therapy community is not used to doing is saying to people, you know what, that sexual behavior is not okay. Or you shouldn't be doing that or that's problematic for you. In fact, as a sex addiction therapist, it's not my job to tell you that you should or shouldn't be doing any particular sexual behavior unless you tell me that that sexual behavior is interfering with your life that it's destroying your family or the things that are important to you. You know, if you're looking at porn consistently a couple hours a night, or if you're having affair after affair and also seeing prostitutes and going to strip clubs and you're also married, I mean, these are this is gonna destroy your life. So my goal as a sex addiction treatment specialist is not to say, you know, you shouldn't be doing this because I think it's bad or wrong. My job is to be saying, you need to change your sexual behavior because it's interfering with your life and destroying the things that are important to you.